All right, we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Ubuntu Community Team Q&A. We do these every week where we give everybody an update on the things that have been going on in Ubuntu development and in the community. And uh, we'll also take questions from you. We have an IRC channel. If you're on UbuntuOnAir.com, right below this video here, you'll see a nice embedded chat window where you can get to our IRC channel. It is hash Ubuntu hyphen on hyphen air um, on Freenode IRC. Oh, hang on, I've got a video playing somewhere. All right, well, the video's live, I know that. Uh, anyway, if you go to the IRC channel below the video, you can ask us questions starting with the word question in all caps. That way uh, we get a nice highlight on it and we don't miss it. Uh, I'm joined today with by uh, Nick Skaggs, who's also from the community team. Hello. Um, Nick does a lot of work with the QA and CI team within Canonical. So any testing related questions, uh, now's a good time to ask. All right, so we've got a couple of updates we're going to get through first. Go ahead and ask questions anytime, though. We'll get to them uh, after the updates are over. Uh, first off, uh, we have the Ubuntu Online Summit coming up next week. So that is Tuesday through Thursday next week from, I think, 1400 UTC until 20 UTC. So that's uh, afternoon, evening for Europe and morning and early afternoon for most of the U.S. And unfortunately for people in Asia, it is late at night into morning for them. Uh, but the videos will all be recorded, like always, so you can go back and watch them on YouTube. Uh, so that, that schedule is on uh, summit.ubuntu.com. We are just now getting sessions registered and on the schedule, so keep checking back to uh, see what's on there. If you don't see anything of interest yet, don't worry. We are getting a lot more sessions coming in. Um, we will have, I believe, Mark doing a keynote there, and uh, as well as, well as uh, Jane Silver doing a Q&A and hopefully a lot of other good sessions. So be sure to join, take some time to uh, go watch those videos and hang out with us for a few days. Uh, we've also had, uh, we had an UbuCon, I think last weekend over in Germany that several people went to. Um, UbuCons are little mini conferences, either standalone or with another conference that are Ubuntu specific. We get a lot of presenters from Canonical and from the community to talk about things going on in Ubuntu um, show off some really cool demos and just hang out with people who all happen to be interested in Ubuntu. So we had that uh, in Germany last weekend and later in November the 19th I believe in Orlando, Florida right here near Nick and I. Uh, we're going to have another UbuCon as part of the FaucetCon conference. So if you are in Florida or the southeast that feel like making a drive it will be uh, well worth your time there both UbuCon and FaucetCon. Uh, are good things to attend. Nick, did you want to do any updates? Um, I think you've you've covered uh, a lot of things pretty well. I will talk about um, one thing that happened not that not that many days ago, which was a, a release. So, um, for those of you who who like to upgrade and get the latest and greatest, uh, Wiley came out last Thursday, um, which is always exciting. That means the, the next release actually will be the LTS, which is um, really cool. It's, it's always interesting to sort of take a look and see um, what has changed since Trusty and to think that Trusty is uh, a year and a half old now already, so. Yeah, it goes by fast, doesn't it? Now we've got the Zinio Zerus, I think it is. Yeah, uh, it's Zinio, but what is the, I don't know if I know either. I think it's Xerus, if I remember right. It's some, some African uh, squirrel. Yes, it's the African squirrel. Xerus. It's going to be our next LTS release coming out in April of next year. So it's going to be a fun cycle. There's a lot of work to get done for the next LTS. Indeed. Uh, speaking of some of that work, uh, some of you may have seen news articles today that uh, Convergence features have recently landed in the phone. If you follow me on Google+, Plus, you probably have seen me posting some videos and some pictures teasing what's coming. Those have now landed in the daily images. So if you have a Nexus 4 or a Nexus 7, 
and you're on the RC proposed channel, which is the daily builds, you should have that now where you can plug your phone in to an HDMI monitor, connect a Bluetooth mouse, and you'll get a nice uh, desktop setup. Windows cursor for your mouse, everything that you would expect for an actual desktop environment should be there. Uh, still very new. There's still a lot of features that need to be implemented before it's uh, on par with Unity 7. But it's really cool to see your phone being able to start doing that. Uh, yeah, and uh, somebody on IRC mentioned OTA 8, the next over-the-air update, which should have this landed in there. So that is scheduled for sometime early next month. Yeah, it's I think it's the nineteenth. I want to say it's coming yeah. soon. Hmm. Yeah, the last OTA OTA seven was delayed a little bit, so it's going to be a short window before the next before uh, OTA eight comes out. So that's cool. Something to look forward to. Also, some things to look forward to. Um, the core apps developers have been landing some really cool features. There's a couple I wanted to highlight because Alan's been showing them off to us recently. Um, the document viewer has the ability now to open any document that LibreOffice can open. So they're using something called LibreOffice Kit, which is a small embeddable library for LibreOffice. It's uh, what they use to power their Android app, actually. Uh, so they've integrated that into our doc viewer, and now it can open any uh, LibreOffice document, which also means it can open any Office document that LibreOffice can open. So if you have a you know, a PowerPoint or a Word document or something, you should be able to open that now on the doc viewer on the phone. So that's really cool. Another neat feature, uh, I don't know if it's landed yet or if it's still in development, but the file manager now has Samba support. So if you have a Samba server at home sharing your files on your home network, you can point your phone file browser app to it and copy files off. It's really neat being able to just go and copy files uh, I did it with some music files to test the music player instead of having to plug my phone into my laptop and copy it over or you know, SSH over into the phone to copy them. Just file up, pull up the file manager, connect to my home server, and copy some files off. Really, really cool stuff. Yes, that is um, that is in, uh, in the store. It's been in the store for about a week, I think. And that's a good reminder. I actually just unpublished my uh, x86 build of file manager because it's now multi multi-arch click. So those of you who are, are running um, uh, on uh, Unity 8, let's say on the desktop or something like that, uh, you'll get a, a much, much updated and nicer file manager um, when you when you go to the store. So, Yes, the API has landed some new components that are going to make convergence of apps a lot easier to do. Um, adaptive page layouts is the big one that's going to let you easily make apps that will scale from phone to desktop views in a way that's very uh, user-friendly and functional. So I'm looking forward to a lot of apps converting to use that. I plan on, once I have a little bit of free time, updating my Reddit app to use it also to make it uh, a little more desktop friendly than it is now. Uh, all of those are now online. So if you go to uh, developer.ubuntu.com, you can find the new API docs. It is SDK version 15.04.1. Uh, that's also the name of the new framework that you have to use in your click package to get those. And it's uh, ubuntu.components 1.3. So all of that cool new stuff is there. You should definitely go and check that out. All right, that's all the updates I had. Nick, do you have any other updates from uh, the QA side of things? No, um, I'm just reading the RSC talking about uh, streaming files over the network to the phone, which is interesting. Uh, Popey's mentioning that uh, right now the Samba support, of course, is preliminary, and so it's it's mainly copy copying files, which is great. So you can always copy and then play, but um, yeah, streaming support is definitely interesting. So, all right, Nick, have you shown off your um, your app for testing the phone? Yeah, uh, I did want to talk, talk a little bit about that. Um, so you may have seen a few weeks ago, um, uh, I guess I should back up. For the longest time, uh, many of you who have 
uh, had a phone and been an early adopter, um, even even buying some of the old Nexus devices to, to run Ubuntu Touch before there was even uh, commercial partners on board uh, and doing tests and, and filing bugs. Um, kudos to you guys because those, those have been a big help all along the way. Uh, your feedback has always been important to really help to shape uh, what we see now today in the phones. Uh, but as part of that, I always wanted to see something uh, to make, you know, uh, your lives easier and to, to en enable developers and the core app folks and anyone else who's, who's developing for a phone and writing writing software to, to make it easier to get your feedback collectively in, into the hands of those developers. And so we introduced this app called Pilot. Uh, you can find it in the store. And essentially what it does is it allows uh, the developers to serve up test cases to you as a, as a you know, interested party and willing to test uh, applications or services on the phone. Um, we actually <clears throat> rolled it out a few weeks ago with several core apps, and uh, so the core app developers got some wonderful feedback from all of you who tested. Uh, several hundred of you actually went and did that, so big thanks to all of you who actually went out and tested. Um, you'll notice uh, that I think over the weekend I pushed an update to the application, and now um, there's a, a different test suite that's in there, uh, and so there's there's some more stuff for you to play with, and this is actually covering some of the phone services and using the phone. So it asks you to do things like uh, make sure you can add and remove contacts and text messages, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, there you go. I think you can all see that. So those are all the different tests that you can run. And it does a variety of automated ones too, right, Nick? Um, the, the only automated check that exists is basically to get information about your phone so that when, when you submit your results to us that we have your phone and the build um, that you're using and that's it there's no um, uh, otherwise there's no real automated test everything is intended for you to to read it and manually run through it hopefully the automated tests are all running nicely in the lab uh, without anyone having to look at them that's or, true i should say manually run them uh, that's the idea but Yes, so they're, they are all manual. So this is a really easy way to contribute to Ubuntu just by running these tests. If you have a phone that's running Ubuntu um, and you put this app on there, you know, if you've got five minutes sitting in a waiting room somewhere or, you know, commercial breaks during TV, just launch up a couple of these tests, walk through them. It'll tell you what steps to do. So you just do them on the phone and then you report back it passed or it failed. And then that all gets submitted back to uh, the Ubuntu phone developers so that they can see what's working and what's not, catch problems early if they break. Uh, a lot of people ask us, you know, I want to contribute to Ubuntu. I'm not a developer. Uh, what can I do? I want to test it. So if you want to test it, this is a great way to do it. Um, it's It gives us a lot of really good information, more than just, you know, trying it out and filing bugs or commenting on forums about your experience. This gives us some real measurable data that helps us quite a bit. Indeed. So please go doing that. And right. Nick, for uh, developers who might want to contribute to this, they can help by writing test cases, right? Yeah, um, actually, so there was a, um, I just replied to a bug report, although I'd heard from several other folks who wanted to do the same thing, which is that uh, they're just third-party developers who are obviously developing for the phone, and they were curious about getting uh, some test cases uh, funneled through pilots so that they can collect feedback in the same way. Um, that shouldn't be too difficult, but uh, we don't necessarily have a plan in place just yet to do that. So there's actually a UOS session. Um, so anyone who has enjoyed using pilot or is a developer and maybe wants to use pilot um, for their own testing, uh, you should you should come check it out. Let me get a link for you. Um, but it's happening next week at UOS, and so uh, we'll be talking uh, about that and and more things about Pilot, um, all things Pilot, so to speak, and and really user testing on the phone, and how we can make that experience better. All right. So those are all of our updates. We're now moving into the question period of the show. So please start asking your questions. We've got 45 minutes left, so we've got plenty of time. Uh, don't wait until the last minute, though. Ask them as you think of them. All right, so while Nick's getting that link, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one from Core Apps Police, uh, which I think might be a, a pseudonym for Popey. The uh, question is, when are we going to get Deco notifications working? It's a problem of the app or the system itself, background apps. Um, so it's really more of the system itself, the fact that Deco can't run in the background on the phone. 
so it can't keep checking for updates. We do have a uh, notification helper that will run and check to see if you've got new Google email, but it doesn't know about Deco, so it will just want to open up the Gmail web app. Ideally, whenever we have um, an app that uses a third-party service, that third-party service will use our push notifications. That way, nothing has to run on your phone checking for updates all the time. They push it to our server, and our server pushes it to your phone. Uh, that saves battery on your phone. It saves um, data if you're on a data plan that's you know, limited. And it's just really a better solution. Unfortunately, we're still small, and so people like Google aren't going to go out of their way to work well with us yet. So for things like Deco, that is a limitation. Um, for other things like Telegram, where we have worked with the service provider on that, and uh, we got them using our push notifications, that works really well. Uh, so yeah, there's a problem there for Deco. It is hopefully a very temporary problem that will get fixed as soon as we have uh, an official Gmail app from Google that supports push notifications. Uh, until then, I think uh, one of our community guys, Nicholas, has been working on the polling server to make it work better with various IMAP clients. I don't know if Deco is going to be able to take advantage of that or not. Uh, we're looking at including Deco, I think, as the default app in some of our phone images. So we might at some point be able to have the system that's currently polling for new Gmail messages open up Deco instead of opening up the web app. So there's a few possibilities, you know, the proper way to do it and the way that we might actually be able to get to work without Google's help. But hopefully soon. And the, the app itself, Deco, can use the IMAP idle protocol. So it can actually sit there and listen for new updates to the server if it's not running under a, a lifecycle management that's going to stop it. So if you run Deco on the desktop, which I think they're uh, soon going to be working on a converged UI for it so you can use it on the desktop, then it will be able to check for uh, emails regularly for you. Because the plan last I heard was that uh, when you're running it on the desktop, it's not going to be um, stopped when it's not in the foreground. All right. Nick, did you find that link? Yeah, uh, I shared it with the chat. Um, All right. But the session is called User Level Testing for Ubuntu Phone. So for those of you who might be watching the video, uh, head to the summit.ubuntu.com site. You'll find it in the show and tell track called User Level Testing for Ubuntu Phone. All right. So Dan Chapman's in the IRC channel. He's the Deco developer, and he just updated uh, Core Apps Police, saying that they're in the process of writing a plugin for that account poll daemon, which is the one that currently checks for. Uh, for new Gmail emails. So it sounds like they are working on that, and that should let you get notifications uh, for Deco, which will be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Dan. All right. The next question is from Lexicon. Yes, how is a bunch of convergence better than and or different from Windows Continuum? Why should the general public care playing devil's advocate? So. I don't know a whole lot about Continuum other than the you know, demos that I've seen. Uh, I think in theory, there's not a lot of difference between them. I think in practice, we're still a little bit ahead of Microsoft in terms of our implementation. The last I heard, Continuum is still going to give you very phone and tablet-like window management. So it's still all full screen apps. Still, a lot of things don't work with keyboard and mouse the way you would expect a desktop to. While Unity 8, when you connect it to uh, a keyboard and mouse and it flips into desktop mode, is a lot more like a traditional desktop like Unity 7 is. So you do get separate uh, windows that you can move around and layer and tile however you want. Uh, it's very, it's going to be very keyboard driven. I don't know how much is there yet. I think it's still missing some things. Um, but I think in theory, we're both going in the same direction. It's just going to be a matter of who gets there first and who does it better. Yeah, I was going to be a, a bit of a smart aleck and say the difference, of course, is that you get Linux, you know, so you get one, yeah. you get Ubuntu on the one. And so there's nothing, 
I mean, it's 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 Ubuntu. You can run anything, do anything. It's it's the traditional desktop that you that you know, love, and want. Um, I'm, I agree with Mike. I'm not sure you're going to get that on the Microsoft side. I think it's a little more specialized, um, which you know, both approaches, I suppose, have pluses and minuses, but that's probably the key difference. Another big difference, and this is a little more philosophical maybe, but uh, if you go to unity.ubuntu.com, you'll find instructions for getting the source code and modifying the source code. Uh, so that's something that you're not going to be able to do with Windows Continuum. Uh, we've already had some people trying it out, contributing some stuff. I've contributed some stuff to it, and I'm not a really good developer. Uh, but the fact that most of the front end is in QML and JavaScript makes that a lot easier to contribute to than uh, Unity 7 has been with its compiz and C++. Right. And of course, um, it, it'll run, you know, it runs on the Nexus devices now. Um, but you know, to potentially, assumably, presumably run on, on many more devices than, than Windows Continuum as well, which is nice. Yeah, I think Windows has got a specific hardware requirement for Continuum to work, uh, something beyond just being able to do video out. Right. Um, whereas for us, as long as we can get the video up on a bigger screen, or even if not, you know, if you've got a tablet that you want to just dock to a keyboard, it'll work that way too. Indeed. All right, keep the questions coming. What's um, our next one? I was just looking at the photo, speaking all this convergence talk, uh, Popey is watching us on his Nexus 7 tablet. It's been connected to a, a display running Ubuntu, which is pretty cool. Oh. You can check out that image or link. Can you screen share on that? Oh, sure. Maybe. Firefox just has to love me first. <laughs> ah, there we go. Nice. <laughs> With the exception of my goofy looking face right there, that's still pretty cool. Yeah, sort of a, a nice sneak preview. So I told him he was next level. <laughs> yeah. I th the fact that it's actually playing is pretty neat, though, too. You know, that's in the Ubuntu browser on the phone, and uh, you can still play the YouTube stream. Yeah, yeah, I was. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. I'm uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. All right. Let's see, CMT has asked. When the media indicator will land with next, pause, etc. button, does that mean under the hood I will be able to control the music with the media buttons? Uh, yes, it does. And in fact, I think I have that still. Let me see. Yeah, so let's see. Let me see here. Got some media buttons. And they do work already. I've tried it out with the music app and uh, with the podcasting app, Podbird, and it works for both of those. It's fine. Uh, right now, it's just play and pause that's working. I think they're still working on implementing the forward and back uh, buttons. But it's there. It's landed in the daily images. I don't know if it was in OTA 7 or not. Um, but it's in the RC proposed channel, at least. And yes, it does work. And yes, you can control your uh, Bluetooth headset or speakers with it. Um, I connected it to, uh, I've got a, a Bluetooth speaker that uh, my phone connects to, and it works fine. So yeah, that's all there. Right, <clears throat> and that, that is scheduled to come in for OTA 8, which I looked up is November 18th, is the current date, target on that. So just in time for Thanksgiving. <laughs> all right, just crack us. How will you be able to get notifications from your own mail server in Deco? So, and Dan Chapman can certainly correct me if I'm on, wrong on this, um, but I believe as long as you've got an IMAP server, I know if you have an IMAP server, you can connect Deco to it, and I'm going to assume that their account poll plugin will be able to check that server for new messages. So again, as long as it's IMAP, it'll work. I know they've looked at adding POP support to Deco. I don't know if that's there yet or not, um, but you should use IMAP anyway. It's just better.
right. Actually, I think. Um, sorry, I guess CMT was asking the question about the media player. That's a good question. Do you know if it works with? Um, I think he's talking about like inline media buttons on your headset or with like a Bluetooth button. Oh, oh, I don't those. have any of that, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I've only got like volume controls on mine. Right. So you'd have to try it and find out once those are working anyway. Uh, I see Andrew Hazen's in IRC talking about the music app work that he's doing now and working with the Media Hub developers on that. So if you have any questions on how that's going to work or how the music player works, Andrew Hazen is your guy. Go talk to him. <laughs> I'm sure he would love any help also. Yes, all these core app developers must love uh, you directing people at them, Mike, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't know who, which core app developer to go talk to, you can go find Popey. He will know. There you go. There um, What's our next one? Yeah, what is our next question? Core apps police is asking, is there a possibility to integrate messages from the messaging app into the Telegram app? Y not yet. But there's work on that. So, and maybe we can get somebody to do a presentation on the current state of this at the uh, online summit. But the platform developers are working on a way to add different services to the messaging app right. um, by providing plugins, just like how like empathy works with different plugins. Uh, so that that's in the works. Um, there. They're having to create something that will work under confinement and still allow you to integrate how you need to integrate into the app. So there's probably still a lot of questions to work out um, and implement implementation details to work out on that. But that is the plan. It's not there yet, though. All right, next one is from Chloe Wolfie Girl. Chloe, good to see you on here again. She asks, uh, any fun updates about Telegram? There is a Telegram app 2.0 being worked on. So the one that's currently in the store uses um, libqt Telegram, I think, is the library. Um, but the next version, version 2, is being rebased on a different library that's, I think, used by some other Telegram apps. So it's a pretty big rewrite of everything under the hood. Uh, but that's coming along. There is, I think, a testing package that somebody has. I'm not sure who has that. Um, I'll try and find out, and I, I can message you on Google Plus once I have that, uh, if you want to test it. It will, however, overwrite your current Telegram app. Uh, so you might not want to do that. You might want to stick with what's stable and works. Uh, if you rely on it pretty regularly. Right. I was going to say, I know I've seen uh, a, a flurry of translation activity. So I know it must be getting pretty close to release. Yeah. <laughs> if everybody wants Telegram stickers. I don't yeah. know if that's working in the, the 2.0 version or not. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been missing stickers too. My friends send me stickers and it just pops up saying, message type not supported. And then I'm they give me a hard time for not seeing it. Yeah. All right, more questions. Keep them coming. I think the last one we've got right now is from Core Apps Police. It says, uh, the calendar app is dead or just sleeping because I can't sync my events. I haven't had an issue with that, but I know we just switched to a new syncing framework. So we had been using uh, Sync Evolution to do this. And now we're using something called Buteo. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, but it's a framework that was developed for Nemo Mobile, which was a fork of Migo, I think, part of the whole Tizen, Migo, Memo family. Anyway, they put together this framework, and uh, we've, we're migrating over to use that. I know Contacts has been moved to use it. I don't know if Calendar has yet or not. Not to my knowledge. But it's, well, I mean, at least for Contacts, it's coming with UTO, OTAA. I wonder if Popey could probably answer the question about 
um, calendars use. But if not, Popey probably knows who can. So ask Popey. It could be that there's just a bug that something in your calendar feed is causing it to fail. Um, but yeah, ping Popey on IRC and he can point you to somebody who can help you figure out what's going on with your sync. It should right. be working. Yeah, you could you can try with something like a US holidays feed or something a calendar, a very simple calendar to see if um, it's not yours, it doesn't have custom events in it to see if, if it's a problem with your feed or not. That's, that's what I would do. All right, we have a question from Andrew Hazen. Do you think this OTA cycle has been too short? As we are already at feature freeze and OTA 7 only just went out the door, how many weeks would you would be your preferred cycle? So I mentioned earlier that this cycle was short because the last one was a little bit long. So I think we're trying to get back on track from uh, running over with OTA 7 by having a shorter OTA 8 window. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be a problem because there were a lot of people working on stuff to land in OTA 8 even before OTA 7 went out. So, right. you know, with the, the CI train silos, people were able to keep mm -hmm. working on that. One of the big things is, you know, the convergence work that just landed in the daily images. That was all being heavily worked on before OTA 7 went out. So I don't think it's blocked any development. I don't think the developers have really... Um, had a problem with it being a shorter window this time around. Yeah, I would say the historically the cycle, if you look, it's been pretty much once a month uh, on the money. So um, presumably I that's... I think the target is six weeks. I was going to say, I think, right, I think the target is six weeks, but we've hit pretty much once a month. So I guess you can read yeah. into that as you will, but I yeah. think four to six weeks is probably a, a pretty good target for, you know, feeling fresh, having something updated on your phone, while at the same time not making a, a big long development cycle. Yeah, I so. think so. Now, asking my personal preference is uh, going to get you kind of a skewed answer because I've been running the daily builds for a long time now. If I don't, you know, every weekend when I don't get a, a daily update, it feels like forever until Monday and I get that next image out. Uh, but I think six true. weeks is, I think like Nick said, six weeks is a really good balance between getting updates out frequently and having the time to make sure that all of the updates are stable and everything works. Right. We do have to QA this stuff, or at least, you know, we hope, right? Yeah. So. All right, this sounds like uh, one for you, Nick, from Core Apps Police. How many Ubuntu users get involved in testing the Core Apps, like is happening now with version two of the Telegram app? Do they have to be Ubuntu insiders? Um, this is somewhat of a poopy question as well. They don't have to be Ubuntu insiders. Yeah. Um, and I think by Core Apps, he probably means the default apps on the phone, not right. just the ones under the, the Core Apps project umbrella. Right. Um, uh, Traditionally, uh, well, I guess we, we've had a, a few different approaches and how we've how we've tested new versions. So um, you've seen, or if you've been around for a while, you may have seen uh, there was some uh, what do we call them? Next gen or rewrites or what, what, what were those branches called? But uh, uh, new new versions of uh, clock and calculator and uh, weather and music. All of them sort of had a a, uh, oh, the reboot branches, that's what they're called. That's it. Um, and so for those, um, eventually at some point, they, they made it into the store. And so there was actually dual versions in the store. So uh, Popey asked for folks to who are interested uh, via the phone mailing list to, hey, go check out this uh, this app in the store and update it in, par in parallel for a little while before um, the reboot version, of course, replaced the old version. Um, on the, By the same token, many um, apps, of course, just run through smaller test sets and so often it's just a request on the mailing list and uh, a link out to, to grab a, a click somewhere and install it manually on the phone. Um, this is something that uh, I think we could talk about in the OS session which is you know if there needs to be or if there's a desire to have uh, a slightly more official way of doing this. Um, I know we've spoken with the store guys in the past talking about being able to select um, a beta or alpha channel, you know, for an application. Um, I think that would be really cool and probably one of the best ways to do it. Uh, so, you know, 
those of you familiar with Steam has the same thing. You can subscribe to the, the beta version, the channel, you know, uh, so that you can get that, always be running the latest quote unquote beta instead of the stable version. Uh, in the same way you can pick a channel for your phone. Um, so that would be really cool and useful, but no, you don't have to be of a Ubuntu Insider. So if you do want to help test now, um, feel free to ping uh, if, if something's going on, obviously if you don't know that an app needs to be tested, but. If you do happen to know, for instance, like Telegram, and you want the click, um, just ask around. Someone would be happy to share it with you. Um, otherwise, watch the core apps, or uh, excuse me, the, the Ubuntu phone mailing list, and often you'll see developers uh, posting and asking for, for help with testing. But uh, that's definitely something we can work on to make that uh, easier. Um, but, but don't hesitate to get involved now if you're interested. And of course, keep your apps updated. Go, go to the system settings, go down to update, and make sure you've got the latest version of apps uh, fairly regularly. That's uh, That'll make sure that you're running the latest, and if you report any bugs or missing features, uh, you know that they're not actually in the code yet. Yes, this is true. Make, make sure you're at least running latest stable. <laughs> All right. Uh, Just Krakus is asking, will multiple Google calendars from the same account finally work in OTA 8? That sounds like a core apps developer question. So maybe Popey can answer that or point you to somebody who can. I don't know where that would need to go, if it's in the calendar app or if it's in the syncing framework. The move to the new syncing framework may have made that possible if it wasn't before. I simply don't know. I think it, I, hmm, I'm gonna open my mouth and look foolish, but I'll do it anyway. I believe it, used to always sync the calendars it just didn't show only showed one yeah i think it always used like the default one or the primary one right that was that was my experience so yeah uh just caracas is also asking he said it's been a while since i made an html5 app does it get more love now he said because the last time i made an app it felt left out from the qml apps i know there has been work on the web app container and uh, the APIs around that. I don't know how much, just because I personally don't like writing HTML5 apps. That's a personal preference for me. Um, so you can join hash Ubuntu web app, hyphen web apps, um, and you can find David Barth and Alex Abrao in there uh, who are in Canonical and uh, Adnan, whose IRC nick is Daker, D-A-K-E-R, uh, any of those three can give you more information about uh, HTML5 apps. I know, depending on how long it's been, um, they redid the a lot of the theming and, and the components, and it looks the, the the things line up really nicely now. Um, and I know that uh, at least over the summer, when I was helping Daniel with the uh, Ubuntu Help app, um, which is an HTML5 app, uh, that we did a lot of work to bring it up to par. Uh, from a testing perspective. So if you wanted to write functional tests or unit tests or use autopilot to test it, all that's possible and, and that's covered. There's tutorials for that on developer.ubuntu.com in the, in the quality section. Um, so from a testing perspective, uh, it, it gets all the same love as a, as a QML application. Um, but I, I can't speak otherwise uh, for developing the app. We also have all the new API docs for HTML on the website also. So if you go to developer.ubuntu.com slash apps slash HTML5 slash API, I think it is, um, it'll give you links to the new API docs for that. Uh, anything new should be in there. And we all got uh, to hear Nick's dog for a little bit there. His, uh, it's a puggle, right? Yeah. Yes, it's a it's a pug and beagle mix. Uh, he's very cute, of course, and uh, someone decided to come to the door, so he's excited. All right. Uh, let's see. Core Apps Police again is asking: Can a translator ping the app developer just for an update to translations, or does he have to wait for the next update to the app? Uh, you can ping the app developer. It's up to them how often they release updates to the store. Uh, but if you've got a bunch of new translations, they might uh, be happy to push out a new update just containing new translations. And of course, translations are another great way for anybody to contribute to Ubuntu or any of the apps that we have. Uh, those all go through Launchpad. Um, 
if you have any questions about how to get started for that, you can ping uh, myself or Nick or Popey or DPM on IRC anytime, and we can send you on the right path for that. I guess Nick's gone to see who's at the door, so uh, I'll continue on without him. CMT asks, I want to play with the convergence. With the current Ubuntu devices, what R is the device that can do that? I saw the Nexus 4, what about others? Um, right now, it is just the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 7 that can do that, and you need to get a slim port adapter. Let me find mine here. So you got to get an adapter. Looks like this, um, and that'll connect your Nexus device to an HDMI monitor. Uh, some people have also plugged this to an HDMI to VGA adapter to put it on a, a screen that only has VGA inputs. Um, so those are the only two that work with it right now. They're the only two devices that can do video out over their uh, micro USB port. So unfortunately, if you've got a BQ or a MyZoo, uh, that's not an option yet. Although BQ is working on a new device that is going to be able to do that, and that's going to be our first commercial device uh, where we're going to support the convergence um, use case where you plug it in and you get an actual desktop environment from it. So that's exciting. Work's being done on that now. That's why all of the new convergence code is landing, is to uh, prepare for that. Welcome back, Nick. Thanks. Um, right, Lars. Sorry, did you? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just reading Lars' question, uh, and I was thinking of something. So anyways, Lars is asking uh, about printing from the phone. He says, is it already possible via Google's cloud print, but I was thinking of via Wi-Fi. Um, so I don't know if anyone has tried this, but something that I have done in the past is to uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but it's a, a, a Linux command line tool that allows you to um, create a fake uh, USB uh, host on your on your machine. So I use I've used it to wirelessly print to my USB printer essentially. Um, and so in theory, in theory, you can do the same thing. Um, you bind it on the uh, uh, I bind it to my NAS, and then it, it serves it up as a fake virtual uh, USB drive. So to my phone or desktop, well, in theory to my phone, but to my laptop, it's, it sees it as a, uh, uh, a local uh, USB printer. But I so don't know, I know it would be interesting to try on the phone. I, I, I know that um, our, our printing guy, Till, uh, is working on making Cups work on the phone. So Cups is the, the print server that Ubuntu uses. Um, to connect to all your printers and queue up print jobs and stuff. So he's been working on the, the printing stack on the phone and on um, like IoT devices to make sure that it'll run and you can access it from confined apps and whatnot. Um, I know he's had some success. I don't know if that's available to any apps right now. I don't know of any apps currently in the store that uh, are going to try and print yet, but that is being worked on and it is a target to have working. Right. USB IP. That's the name of the tool. So. USB IP. Okay. It's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, at least you know for for traditional use. Yeah. Now once once Cups is working, I, it'll in theory work with anything that you know your desktop Ubuntu will work with. So either right. connected directly or over Wi Fi. Uh. Okay. Next question. Uh, Vidi Midi asks, after seeing the roadmap for Ubuntu, is Unity 8 slash Snappy going to be a mobile thing, or is it going to be possible to run on the desktop? I guess the question is, is it possible to have the same software both on the phone and the desktop eventually? That is the goal of convergence, is to have one set of software for desktop, for phones, for Internet of Things devices. So that's where we're working towards. When we're going to have that actually all finished and working. Uh, we're still working out the timeline for that. Um, right now, the, the phone is on click. It's not on Snappy yet. Um, and will probably remain on click at least until sometime next year. 
But uh, yeah, the plan is to merge them all so you will have Unity 8 and Snappy on your phone and on your desktop. And you should be able to run the same software. So there's work to support all of the unconfined apps that we have currently on Ubuntu desktop in that kind of environment uh, while maintaining the, the security of Snappy and image-based updates and uh, all of the benefits that that gives you also. So there's a lot of work on that. There should be a lot of sessions on it on uh, the Ubuntu Online Summit next week. So if you're curious about that, you can attend there and find out a lot more. Just Caracas is asking, are there plans to move apps to Git on Launchpad? Uh, presumably, he's talking maybe about the core apps or the system applications that we the canonical writes. Yeah, I'm not sure if there are any plans. Uh, it'll be up to you know, the the project owners whether they stick with Bazaar if they want to move to Git. So you'd have to you know ask the developers of whatever app you're interested in. I, I haven't heard any discussions about a wholesale move uh, of all the apps over to Git. I right. think inside Canonical, we're all pretty happy with Bazaar and uh, enjoy working with Bazaar. So what, even though we're adding Git support to Launchpad, I don't expect there's going to be a mass migration um, yeah. of stuff I that's see, already there. Right. I see a lot of folks who are just starting new projects using Git. Yeah, I can see new projects using it. I can see ones that uh, collaborate with uh, upstreams that use Git using it. Right. I mean, otherwise, there's not a lot of not a lot of value gained, um, you know, to, to 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 do the work to to migrate. So. All right. So Chloe Wolfie Girl asks uh, <laughs> the question that you were just talking about, which is, what is the plan for Snap in the phone? And she says, if I upgrade the phone to Snap, you will. Click packages will. Nick, I think we lost you. All right, so Chloe's asking. Um, I think if she moves to Snappy on the phone, will click packages still work? Um, not automatically. There are plans to migrate everything that's in the store. Um, yeah, as a click package automatically to a snappy package for those users. Like I said, there aren't plans right now. Uh, nope, there are plans, but it's not immediately going to happen that we're going to switch the phone over to snappy. So you're going to be using click on the phone for a little while still. All right, the next question is from Core Apps Police. There will be two separate ISO images, Unity 7 and Unity 8, for the 1604 LTS or just an option to select which session you want to be. I would imagine it will be two ISOs right now. Uh, you should be able to install the Unity 8 session on a Unity 7 desktop. You can do that currently. Um, but it's probably going to be separate ISOs uh, just to make it easier so you don't have to download and install a bunch of stuff that you're not going to use one way or the other. All right. Well, that's all the questions that we have, and I seem to have lost my co-host. So it seems like a good time to wrap this up. Uh, we, do, as I said earlier, we do this every week. Um, we will be back next week for another one. It may not be me and Nick. It'll probably be somebody else from the community team. Um, but we'll be here same time, same place, uh, taking questions again, as always. You can follow us, Ubuntu On Air, on uh, YouTube or on Twitter to get updates of new videos and to watch old videos. Nick, I was just wrapping things up. Oop, there we are. Sorry, <laughs> I was talking to myself for a minute there. And... That's all right. So got through all the questions, and I gave the usual plug for Ubuntu On Air stuff. All right, excellent. So we will see everybody next week at the online summit. Indeed. Hope to see you guys there. Bye, everyone. Bye.